What's going on guys? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Welcome back. So we're going to be doing something different today. We're going to be going over some targets you can go after over the next couple weeks and creeping into September. And you know the Milky Way is chock full of awesome targets like this one here, the Rho Ophiuchi Cloud Complex. I love this image. I actually took this one a couple years back when I was in St. George Island. But today we're going to go over some of the less commonly imaged targets. Um, there's so many hidden gems out there and I think a lot of them get overlooked because some of them might be a little bit smaller or they're kind of off the, the beaten path a little bit, but I still think they're worth your time and effort into getting a good image. So let's do that. Let's take a closer look here and we're going to jump on Stellarium. I'm going to walk you guys through where to find these and how you can frame them up to get the best results when you're imaging. So here we have Stellarium, okay, and if you're not familiar with this program, you need to check it out. I'll put a link in the description below, but this thing is awesome. Where, uh, of course, when you first load it, you're going to be in daytime. So let's go ahead and change this to the night scene, and let's get started on our first target here. What we're going to do first, though, is, is we're going to go through and make a couple changes here just to make things a little bit easier to see in these constellations. The first target we're going to check out here is called the Pac-Man Nebula. Let's go ahead and put that in here and check this thing out. Boom, there we go. So let's zoom on in. And as you can see, this thing is pretty awesome. And it's not very commonly imaged. This is one that a lot of narrowband imagers go after, but you can image this with a HA mod, a DSLR. Um, if you click on this, if you click on this tab here, you'll be able to see how this frames up. You'll need to put in the settings for your camera and telescope accordingly. And uh, if you watch my Stellarium uh, tutorial, it'll walk you through on how to do all that. But here we go. We can frame it up, and you can see just how this is going to fit in your field of view, given the telescope and imaging camera setup that you're using. So. Really cool target. I hope to be able to get to it. Uh, I hope to be able to get to this one in the next coming couple of weeks as long as the weather stays clear. I haven't had a clear day and I can't remember the last time. But anyway, that's the Pac-Man Nebula. Our next target we're going to go after is the Cocoon Nebula. This is another really cool target off the beaten path and just kind of the outskirts of our galaxy as you can see here. And really beautiful image. This one will do a lot better with a longer focal length scope. I think the 900 millimeter focal length I have, it will work, but it would do much better with something a bit longer like 15, 1600 millimeter, 2000, like with a Schmidt Cassegrain. As you can see here, it frames up much nicer with the longer focal length scope. I'm still going to give it a shot regardless with my Newtonian, but as you can see, it does much better with the longer focal length. Cool target. Target number three is going to be the Iris Nebula. This is such an awesome target. I love this one. I first imaged this last year with my DSLR and it came out okay. I wasn't too proud of it. it I learned something though with this one. It needs a lot, of, um, a lot of data and it really shines in a dark site. If you can do this at a Bortle 3 or darker site, you're going to come out with a lot nicer of, an, of a result. Uh, just all that interstellar dust that surrounds the nebula is just so much harder to get in light polluted skies. But if you put in the time, you can get it. But it just takes a ridiculous amount of hours otherwise. 
So as you can see, it frames up real nicely here with the Newtonian. Um, wider focal lengths will do really nicely with this target as well. You can really, with this one's real flexible. You could go super long focal length, wide focal length, and you're going to get a really cool composition. So excellent target to go after, and it stays up above the horizon pretty for a pretty long time, several months actually, a few months at least, you can, you can image this one. So it's at a point in the night sky during August, early September, that it's still very much a reachable target. So highly recommend going after this one here. Now, if you come on down here to its next door neighbor, you'll have this very nice nebula called the Ghost Nebula. And this, is, this one is another one of those that you just don't see popping up on feeds very much. It, it's a smaller target. It would do better with a longer focal length scope, but even you know, 900,000 millimeter focal length, if you've got um, a camera with a smaller chip, that'll help boost that image scale a bit and you'll get a really, really nice result there. Love this target. It just has a very kind of eerie, creepy look about it, but it's too cool, man. I'm definitely gonna be going after this one. Now, this last target we're gonna be going after is called NGC 6823. And this one is in the southern part of the sky. I actually can't get to this one where I'm located. This one, I'd have to go on location somewhere you know, where I get a good view of the southern part of the sky. Something like when I go down to St. George, we have such a great, fantastic view in the Gulf there of the southern Milky Way. So I may have to save this one for a later time, but if you got a good view of the southern sky, this is a really cool target. Again, you don't see this one come up much. You don't hear about it very often, but it is a beautiful image. If you go on Astrobin, you can see examples of this image, and there is some incredible work that's been done with this target. So really cool target to go after and i'm really hoping i can take a stab at this at some point if i can ever find the time to break away and and uh find a site where i can get a good view of the southern sky just not easy here in central georgia so guys so those are my top five not so common targets some of them are imaged more than others but there's a few on there that are for sure just overlooked i think by many and some of it is you know they're smaller targets. You're gonna need a, a tighter image scale, either a really small chip or a combination of a smaller chip and a longer focal length camera. And that'll give you that tight image scale you need to get on some of those. Others like the Iris Nebula and NGC 6823, they're a little more flexible with focal length and you can get away with using just a medium focal length range or even a wider angle focal length range and get a really good result. But that's it, guys. Those are my top five. I hope you get a chance to image at least one of these in the next few weeks or so. Guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a new one for me trying this out, so I hope you got something out of it, gave you some imaging ideas for your next target. As always, thanks for watching. God bless. Keep on looking up. Keep on seeking. And until next time, clear skies. See you guys.